So today I've woken up to the news that there are three currently listed AFL players who are probably never going to play AFL again. Angus Brayshaw has retired due to his concussion injuries. Taron Thomas has been sacked by North Melbourne and Joel Smith is completely stuffed. Let's get into it. Okay, let's talk about this Taron Thomas thing first. So Taron Thomas had been sacked after being given an 18 game suspension by the AFL for inappropriate conduct towards women, I believe was the actual charge. Now I kind of felt hesitant a little bit about commenting on complicated stuff like this. For the most part as well, it was kind of a little bit murky exactly what was going on with the investigation. And I do generally try and keep things about football on this channel, but I think it's kind of worth discussing this. And even the way to, to handle this particular topic gave me some hesitance. I was like, how, how open do I feel about my opinion about this? But I think I'm just going to stop being pussy and I'm just going to call it how I see it. I think Taron Thomas is a piece of shit. Now, I do believe that people will not always be defined by their actions or how they are as a person at one given time for the rest of his life. And I really hope Taron Thomas sets his life on the right track. I understand he's been through some adversity growing up. I think that's kind of been alluded to and I am empathetic towards that. But it doesn't mean that we can't call terrible behavior out and call it like it is. And him getting sacked is absolutely the right decision. So let's go through some of the stuff that he's done. So he's been suspended for 18 games by the AFL for the most recent allegation, if you like. Interesting thing to be about this is that this is an AFL investigation, not a criminal investigation or anything like that. Um, I have no real other opinion other than that. It's just kind of interesting that this is the AFL doing the investigating and the decision-making. But anyway, so prior to the, the final news of him getting sacked being broken, most of the language around it was just inappropriate conduct to win, towards women. And obviously it was so vague that I didn't really have an opinion on it at that point other than you know, that sounds bad. But specifically, it was determined by the AFL, I'm quoting here, that Thomas had engaged in multiple acts of misconduct, including threatening a woman via direct messages several times. This is about six months after July 2023, where he walked free admittedly of a criminal conviction, but he threatened to distribute intimate videos of his former partner. So seeing a little bit of a trend here. Last April as well, North fined Taron Thomas $5,000 for a video he posted to social media. And I remember seeing this and hopefully I can get the footage of it if it's still on the internet. But he's driving his Mercedes with his feet and the vehicle was drifting between two different lanes. Like, my God, man. What do we think in society of, of drunk drivers, right? We, we're generally anti-drink driving, right? If you get behind the wheel when you're drunk, that's really stupid. And the reason is, it's not just you're endangering your own life, you're endangering other people's as well. Anyway, I don't know how much more needs to be said on this particular topic. But I mean, we're seeing a real pattern of behavior here and, and he's lucky that North Melbourne had the patience that they did. Now, the good thing here is that it sounds like North is acting on their duty of care here. And I do believe that they do have a duty of care here to both Taron Thomas and the wider community a little bit. So what I mean by that is now that he is no longer a North Melbourne player, he's been sacked, he's contracted like over half a million dollars, they say it's between 600,000 and $700,000 a year. He's lost the rights to that now, but they're still going to be providing medical and mental health support. And I do think this is really important. Like I said, just because Taron Thomas might be a terrible human right now. And there seems to be absolutely no doubt that he's guilty of what he's accused of. But what is the right way to handle people like that? I don't think it's necessarily casting off into society, labeling him a bad egg and ignoring them. I think offering that support, the, like the best case scenario here is that Taron Thomas gets his shit together, not only for himself, but also the wider community. <laughs> Because if he's currently, as it is, a bit of a threat to, you know, the women in his life or whatever, you take away his livelihood and cut him off from, you know, his network, his profession, like that problem is only going to get worse. So genuinely, I hope everything goes right for him in the sense that he is able to become a better human. But at the moment, this is crazy. And some other bad news as well. Angus Brayshaw, unfortunately, had to retire due to concussion injuries. Now, obviously, you've probably noticed that Angus Brayshaw wears a helmet and has had a history of concussion issues that date back to like 2016, 2017. I think he missed a lot of football during those seasons and most recently got knocked unconscious in that semi-final with the infamous Maynard smother. He's been concussed and uh, now it seems like it's reached a point where he can't play another game of football. To be specific, I read somewhere that they've like actually identified microscopic changes in his brain. So there has been like a physiological effect. My main reaction to this is just sadness. This is, this is sad because I I like Gus Brayshaw as a player. He's had a rough career. And you think about the Brayshaw family and what they've had to endure as parents of AFL footballers. It, it kind of transcends what most parents of footballers who, you know, between Andrew getting punched in the Western Derby, having his teeth caved in, and then Angus, obviously, with his concussion injuries. I also learned for the first time, may I excuse my ignorance, but Brayshaw's partner is Daniel Frawley, who is Danny Frawley's daughter. And obviously, Danny Frawley was found to have some severe CTE, largely due to repeated head injuries. So that poor girl is, well, she's had her life touched by this sort of stuff, no doubt. 
But anyway, it just it just feeds into this greater issue the league is facing. I read that they've got multiple legal claims from former players over its historical management of head injuries, but the article I found didn't go into specifics. But it's not a not a big surprise. The the AFL is constantly evolving, and I think they need to do that. I think that's I think that's certainly a given. We saw a few weeks back the the league had made thirty rule variations this off season. This is from Laura Kane, the executive general manager of football. And of course, you know the flow on effect from the Maynard smother is that if you elect to smother, sort of like if you elect to bump, you're kind of responsible for what happens after that. It's hard to argue about that. I don't want to get stuck into the, the mechanics of rule changes right now, other than this sucks. And in other news, I commented a few weeks back about Joel Smith, also from Melbourne. Gee, they're not doing well from an off-field point of view at the moment, but we know that he tested positive for having cocaine in his system on game day late last year in a game against Hawthorne, if I'm not mistaken. And if you're unaware and you haven't looked into it, you may not realize that if you test positive for even a drug like cocaine on game day, it is considered performance enhancing and he was looking at a potential ban of between two and four years. So his career is already in doubt. But the new update is that Sports Integrity Australia has charged Smith with three anti-doping rule violations. And one of them is including trafficking or attempted trafficking. So under this code, trafficking is defined as selling, giving, transporting, sending, delivering, or distributing a prohibited substance by an athlete to any third party. Which means, if I'm not mistaken, if he simply sent a message to some of the boys and saying, hey, guys, do you want to buy some? I presume that's what's happened here. Under the football anti-doping code, this counts as trafficking. Now, this sounds extreme, and it is. And I think he is completely screwed either way. I don't think he's going to play AFL football ever again. If that wasn't already clear, Joel Smith is essentially up shit creek without a paddle. Now, what I will say, and I said this in a previous video, is that I think my personal opinion is if a guy's testing positive for cocaine, on game day, presumably, from what I understand, he must have taken it either the night before or a few days before. And if we're talking about a professional athlete who's doing shit like that, we're talking about someone who likely has a drug problem. So I do have some empathy and I hope everything works out. But yeah, he's not gonna play football again. Anyway, guys, just keeping you up to date with my thoughts on some of the cock, <laughs> what? <laughs> some of the cock, what? Jeez, got penis on the brain. Just keeping you up to date with some of the off-field stories happening in the AFL. But let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.